everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and today we're going to be looking at painting distant mountains. Now you may recognize this piece from my Wispy Clouds tutorial, and I actually just finished working on that. So my paint is actually still a little bit wet, but I'm not even going to touch it what's up here, so don't even have to worry about that. So I'm going to be creating sort of these pointed, jagged rocks here, and sort of leveling out towards the our horizon, and then coming back up. Now you can see this technique uh, that I use in my 40 days uh, speed uh, time lapse painting, and uh, the technique's all the same. It's just about uh, choosing the colors the right and uh, learning to to mix them and to play around with them in sort of a distant, foggy, misty environment. Now, if you've ever been sort of standing on top of a mountain or looking from a high up building or high up hill, as you work back towards the horizon, the colors just sort of fade out into a whiter, uh, more tinted out color. And because we're using a red on the background, I'm going to grab a little phthalo green to kind of pull down that color of the red, uh, which we're going to use to create our uh, mountainous colors in the back. So let me zoom in a little and we'll get started. Alright, so we have our palette of color here. I got my phthalo uh, green here, as well as my funny red color, which is a mixture of reds, some, uh, some green, some yellow, some quinacridone magenta. Uh, just enough to kind of offset the color to make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to grab a decent amount of that color, and I'm using a relatively small round brush here. Uh, you can use a liner for this, which I uh, normally would do, but for the sake of the tutorial I want to show you that you can do this just with uh, any small brush, really. Add a little green to that to turn it into sort of a brownish color. And then we're going to go into our white. Just dip through that. A little more green to that. Okay, now it's too much. <laughs> Just trying to find that happy middle ground. Kind of creating a little bit of a gray. Um. Okay, that's probably about as good as we can get there. We do need it to be lighter, so again, white. And if you're ever curious on how close your color is to a black or a gray, uh, grab white. Just take a little bit of that color and pull it into white and see what color that paint actually is. This has a little bit of a, a violet color to it, but that should be just fine. This is, is our dark now, so we don't want to go really any darker than this color we have here. We only want to go lighter from this uh, section up. So, darks. So this was our... So again, you know, this is our mix. Don't want to go any darker than that. So it's our this color I would normally reserve to call a midtone, but uh, because we're doing distant stuff, we have to everything has to be tinted up and uh, lightened just that little bit. <coughs> so I did have some lines sketched out originally, but you know what? They're gone now with the sky, and that's perfectly okay. We can just make up uh, new lines for where we want our mountains to be. So they're basically just big triangles. And I have a mountain coming in down this side, so I don't have to really paint beyond about here. Okay, I have to thin this out a little bit so it can flow down on the canvas. And as you thin out, the color actually lightens a little bit, but it's very, very subtle. Working down towards that edge, we have a smaller one here. I 
That's really all we need on that side. I'm going to add a little bit more down here to kind of add a low level mountain just to kind of drop in that horizon. Here. It's getting a little thinner now. I've just been you know, working off that same pile. I want to basically pull that and extend that as far as I can. That's because I didn't mix enough, but it's always better to mix more than you need than less. And I have that problem quite a lot, is that I'm always not mixing enough paint. I'm running out halfway through. smaller one here to act as a background one. Sort of there's <coughs> the layers, because this is in the, s in the front of these two. Uh, and there, you can just tell that because it's bigger, not because it's, you know, that distance. Even though they're all sort of on that same level plane, uh, there are levels of front and back even beyond what we already have. And we're going to have some trees here, so I don't need to worry about anything too much over here. Okay, now this layer has to dry before we do anything else. Alright, <coughs> now we're not quite dry yet, but in the meantime, I'm going to start mixing out my lighter color, which I've taken white and just quickly pulled that into whatever color I had left, and uh, making, oh man, it's green in there. Now in the meantime, uh, while that's starting to dry, I've got uh, a little mixture of a little bit of green, a little bit of red. Um, and a whole lot of white, and I'm adding even more white to this to really bring that up and turn that into uh, something uh, light. It's not super white, it's sort of an off gray, but it's enough to uh, start toning the, uh, the color of the mountains. Alright, we're not completely dry here, but we are uh, looking pretty good. The edges are coming up. The center isn't quite as dry, but we should be able to work around that. So, we're going to take our funny off-gray white color, and again, since we're using a smaller brush, we want to grab a little water to that, thin it down, just a little. So we're coming up to the edge, and we're just doing the edge because our light uh, is coming from the center, so we want to do the right edge on here, and the left edge on here to give that illusion of light. So, actually I'm going to start with this smaller one just because it's going to be easier on my hand. I'm actually going to grab a stiff brush here so I can kind of pull the white paint that we have there down and in and blend it with the rest of the mountain. We just if we weren't blending it into the side, uh, what would we would achieve is a look of snow. And in this particular piece, I'm not going for snow. I'm going for just sort of light. So we want to make sure we blend that down, like so. And you notice I'm covering a lot of that uh, original base color up, and uh, that's actually good because you don't want a whole lot of that uh, dark, because again, these are distant mountains, they don't have that same uh, vibrant color that mountains in the foreground will have. 
or really any element in the foreground will have. Like so. Again, going back to our blender. And I'm using a stiff brush, but you can use really whatever uh, brush you want. Stiff, uh, soft, whatever. Doesn't really matter as much here. I think in this particular instance, the stiff brush adds an extra bit of texture to the mountains, uh, which will be more visible up close and less visible from far away. And the smaller round I'm using is much softer as well. So they're really two different, two different, very different brushes. And again, this would be much easier for me with a liner brush, but you know, again, you can use whatever you want uh, to do this. It doesn't matter if you have uh, a liner brush or any kind of uh, like expensive special specialty brush or anything like that. You can do this with whatever you have. Okay, I'll take the mountains on the, f on the far side. I thinned my paint out a little too much there, so again, I still want to keep it thick enough to work with, but thin enough to spread. slightly different consistency here. The paint I was using on this side was thinner to begin with, so it's not uh, sort of sitting and mixing in the same way. This is why it's important to let things dry first, which I uh, didn't do completely. So you can see a slightly different look to it. And when you paint, hopefully your layers will, layers will be dry, so you won't have the same kind of problems I have right now. But uh, in making this video, as in making a lot of my videos, I'm anxious to get to the next step. So I tend to forego some of the some of my own rules in these processes. And a lot of this stuff I'm pulling down into the uh, below the horizon. You, I'm just going to get covered up later with other stuff, so not really an issue. Alright, I'm going to do a couple more steps to these mountains to get them uh, really starting to pop a little bit. I'm going to open up my uh, jar of molding paste. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with molding paste, it's an acrylic medium. Uh, basically the standard acrylic uh, 
polymer with the addition of some marble dust to add to add a uh, sort of whitish tint to it. And you can be mixed with uh, any acrylic paint to add uh, texture and to build up uh, different sort of techniques and that kind of thing. So, pull the palette up here so you can see this is the molding paste. It just looks sort of like a white heavy body paint. I'm going to grab my color I've been using here and tint it just a bit to whatever I was using. So, I'm just going to come into my edge a little bit and toss this color, this stuff right in here, just to add a little texture uh, to my my mountains here. And that's, you know, it's really just an aesthetic thing to add a little both perceived texture and actual texture to the piece and uh, something you know just a, a visual sort of a v extra visual element uh, it's not something you need to do this just something I'm doing to kinda liven up the piece a little bit and this mountain on the far side I didn't overlap here to show that it was behind the other one We're just getting that little bit. <coughs> All right, then. <coughs> now, for one more technique to really bring this piece together. Now, these little mountains on the side. Uh, you may think, okay, maybe they're distant, maybe they're kind of falling away in the mist. And uh, while that is, you know, sort of the generally perceived idea for a piece like this, uh, you wonder how exactly do you manage to do that? Well, once this layer dries, and once again, let me just say you have to let your layer dry if you're going to add some mist to this, you can go over in sort of a zinc white or a, a watered down titanium to create a, uh, a layer of mist. Uh, now, something I've done over the course of uh, the past couple years or so, is to whip out a can of spray paint and just to kind of mist off across the side here. And uh, it's sort of a quick and dirty way to uh, add uh, sort of that distant, misty look, um, but it's much faster and much easier to do uh, for a piece much like this. So I've got my can, and I'm just going to go real quick right across the uh, center of that. Right like that. And it's very subtle, it just adds a little bit of that extra mist and uh, really helps kind of pull the piece up and add that little bit of an extra uh, zing right there. Well, that just about wraps up this tutorial. And as always, for more tips, tutorials, and other art videos, do subscribe to the channel. This is Ben from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.